There is Shockwave right there, and he has caused some serious destruction. What's up, Raging Nation? How's it going? This is Alex, you and you're watching the road to TF5. This is Webster's Word Talk about Transformers Last Night, this episode number 166. And the marketing for Transformers Last Night is in full swing. We got product tie-ins, we got the clip from the MTV Movie Awards, and this morning they showed off a new poster and a brand new TV spot, and that's what we're here to talk about in this episode. Let's talk about the new poster first. It is amazing. It is incredible. Oh my god, it is beautiful. And I want it hanging on my wall, framed in my office. Because it is just so epic. The reason why I like it so much is because not only is it epic, but also it breaks tradition. Do you remember the movie posters for the last four Transformers films? They were pretty generic. I mean, the first one was quite fresh because we've never seen it before. But... As they followed along, it's really just the same thing. For example, the head of Optimus, the head of Bumblebee, the head of Megatron, or even just like a full full body shot of, uh, of the main characters like Optimus or Bumblebee or Megatron. And then followed by humans like Sam and Michaela or Sam and Carly or Cage, Shane and Tessa. Or it could be just the, 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 the villains. Like a poster of Megatron or a poster of Shockwave. In any case, we recognize all these characters. I love this because it's mysterious and it just looks awesome. The fact that it has a scene that takes place in a medieval battlefield shows us that the medieval sequences or the concept of it being in medieval times plays a huge part in this story. And to top things off, we got a mysterious character whom I can't even name because I don't even know who it is. So that's why it looks so awesome. And I've never seen a design like this ever before. This is essentially a Cybertronian knight. He looks like a robot and he's wearing knight armor. So that's like a Cybertronian knight right there. Now a lot of people have been asking, I'm confused, is that Steelbane or Skulletron? Does it even matter? So what if it's Steelbane? So what if it's Skulletron? It makes no difference because we don't know anything about them. <laughs> Sure, you can read about the history of the Cybertronian Knights, but who are they in this film? We don't know anything about that, and that's what I love about this movie so far, is that it's shrouded in so much mystery. And this poster is really, really mysterious and awesome at the same time. What this poster actually tells us is that these Cybertronian Knights fought alongside these knights like these i guess these good guy knights right they fought with them they fought with them as allies and they they uh, uh vanquished evil in these these uh medieval in this medieval realm so that concept alone is brilliant i love that and read this tagline it says they have been here forever so this is just a reminder that they've been here for the longest time it's not just like the previous films, which is like, you know, um, they only came at certain times, like um, uh, like during the dinosaur age, or during uh, the, the, the time of uh, the Egyptian uh, worship, or whenever that was, I don't know when that was, but they've been here like forever, all this time they've lived amongst us for millions of years, okay, but um, this is something that I really, really love, so, have to have this poster, I hope that, excuse me, a lot of gas. <laughs> it's available for purchase because I definitely want that poster. I want it more than all the other posters. Now let us talk about a brand new TV spot which is titled Secret Past. And I would like to give a big shout out to Brandon Eberhard, Minecrafter Nicholas, Block Game Frustration, and Jay Saunders for bringing me the official version on YouTube because I know that uh, there was a lot of unofficial versions and I don't like to watch them because they're not in HD. Wait for the nice version in HD, and then you will see a lot more details. So we're going to take a look at this. This is a little bit of my review for this extended TV spot titled Secret Past, and there's a lot to be told here. I just want to say before we begin, forget everything that you think you know about the previous Transformers film. This is more definitive, because 
first of all, they brought in the writers and they basically took everything that we know about the movies and they added in more stuff to the history. So here's a little bit of a teaser for that. Let's talk about it. So it starts off with this shot. This could be like the, um, I guess the, the, uh, um, I guess the museum of Sir Edmund Burton inside his, his castle or his house, wherever he lives. And the first thing you notice besides all these, uh, pictures and photographs in the back, in the wall is the pillar. Notice that there's a pillar. Somebody obviously collected the pillar from Chicago for him, or he's always had a pillar. He's always had space bridge technology with him. So that tells you something. All right, space bridge technology, if you don't already know, in the Transformers movie universe, is something that allows them to pass through space and time. All right, so the fact that he has a pillar with them means he's capable of doing many, many things. So, pretty awesome. And that's not just limited to him. That could be limited to his Transformers, or rather Cybertronian sidekicks. Okay, next we have a shot that zooms in on these photographs on the wall they're also uh framed uh, uh propaganda posters let's start from the left i believe that's winston churchill but just right below him there's a a statue of what could potentially be a a Cybertronian. behind the statue is a propaganda poster i don't really know what it says over there but it says uh where uh, right beside winston churchill there's this one that has Bumblebee in it, like a World War II version of Bumblebee. And it says, over the rampart we marched, Army Air Forces. So it's like a recruitment propaganda poster. And then um, let's look at the one where, it's, where it has Hound in it. Don't dream of victory, fight for it. Join the army now and Hound will fight with you. <laughs> and if you look above, there is the um, that mysterious plane Cybertronian that we don't know who it is. It appeared in that Rethink Your History um, little clip that little promo uh, clip that TV spot and uh, I don't even think it was a TV spot but anyways there it is in a newspaper clipping uh, there's Albert Einstein at the bottom uh, there's a uh, oh there, check this out Empr Explorers magazine that's Archibald Witwicky why does he have a, a a why is he keeping a Archibald Witwicky magazine Explorer magazine on his wall Obviously, it means something to him. Um, is that Al Gore? Is that Al Gore at the bottom right below the queen? Um, and then the rest of what we see here is really just um, these these uh, warning posters that we've seen from Transformers Age of Extinction. Like, for example, this Decepticon, it's watching you, and this enemy, Optimus Prime, that Bumblebee one's probably an enemy poster too. But on the very, very right, it shows something that's holding a sword, some kind of statue holding a sword, all right? Uh, moving on. Uh, I'm just going to talk about the new scenes. I'm not going to talk about like the scenes that we've already seen. This is awesome. You got a, a medieval battlefield going on. This battle is epic and there's like fireballs just flying around in slow motion. It just looks like a really, really crazy scene. And I imagine that once we watch the movie, this entire scene is also will, be, will include a couple of Cybertronian knights with it. They're probably just not done rendering the CG. Moving on. Here is Drift. Drift has been around with the Samurais. I'm just curious what he transformed into during Samurai times, if he even transformed at all. He couldn't have been a Mercedes, <laughs> unless that space bridge technology that Sir Edmund Burton has uh, allows him to become a, Sir, a Mercedes. Uh, here's Drift. Uh, excuse me. Here's Drift with the other Samurai. It could be like a double Drift or it could be a, another version of, of Drift, like a diff, completely different Samurai Cybertronian. And we've seen this image before in that other uh, clip, that Rethink Your History clip. Uh, moving on, here is a drawing, like a painting of four Cybertronian knights who are slaughtering the, op the human opposition during medieval times. These knights have done some serious battle during those times and I imagine that this fight was a complete massacre because you you see all these these uh, dismemberments and beheadings and oh it's pretty brutal <laughs> and you get to even get to see that knight with that battle axe that was shown that we saw uh, in that scene with Optimus Prime as he was getting beaten up by them. Now this is very very interesting. The Order of the Witwikins, 1901. 
These are the Witwickens. I don't know why there are so many of them, but I guess the Witwickens are, are a huge, huge family. And back then, they were either explorers or believers of the Cybertronians. And I think that the writers actually took into consideration the, the Archibald Witwicky story and actually extended that, uh, I, I guess, that uh, the idea that he was an explorer, like a Cybertronian explorer, or explorer of, of, of mysterious things, and extended it beyond Archibald Witwicky, like, and then uh, ex extended it onto his, uh, his extended family. Now there's Hot Rod in the background, and he still looks like a Lamborghini. I hope some consideration was actually taken there as to, dis to, to explain why he's a Lamborghini in the 1900s. <laughs> I mean, the writers, y'all got some explaining to do. <laughs> I'm confused. Check this out. Here is Hound. This is the image we also saw once again in the Rethink Your History uh, clip. And uh, Hound is fighting along with the, uh, during the colonial times. I guess that's what it looks like. I mean, he looks exactly the same as he does as an Oshkosh tactical defense vehicle, complete with uh, freaking artillery, like projectiles on his arms. So, um, like I said before, I'm I'm confused about Hot Rod, but now I'm even more confused about Hound and why he has his uh his parts. Um, hey, check this out. Okay, the most obvious thing that we see here is um the Meg Megatron bust. All right, so Sir Edmund Burton obviously has has some kind of knowledge knowing that Megatron looks the way he looks in this bust, okay? Now check this out. In this painting, it looks like some chaos is going on. Maybe like a village is being like ravaged, like completely destroyed. But there's two Cybertronians in the background. One on the left, uh, top left corner. And then there's Shockwave. There is Shockwave right there. And he has caused some serious destruction. And I'm just wondering, what is the theme of these paintings? Like, I, I mean, I know the theme, but why is why there's so many drawings of of uh, destruction and like massacres and and just battle sequences? I'm really curious about that. Um, here's a photograph of Bulldog who transforms into a tank. We've seen him before in the clip, and we've also seen him before um, uh, in, uh, of course, that 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 um, MTV clip. Uh, not just to rethink your history clip. Uh, he appears in both scenes, and uh, yeah, he's he, he he has had quite a presence uh, with the uh, with the Allied forces. So he is included in the battle. Now check this out. Now here's a drawing of Megatron. I think that's Megatron. Is it? Yeah, I think that's Megatron, and he's done some serious damage. He obviously made something explode, but the fact is that. He looks like a tyrant there, and there's a lot of people there that are probably standing there in fear. Moving on, um, as far as I remember from Sir Edmund Burton's uh, dialogue or monologue, he says something along the lines of, they've been here for thousands of years uh, that are uh, protecting us from the ine like these inevitable or something like that. So based on that dialogue that was spoken at this time in the, in the TV spot, these uh, these uh, Cybertronians were on Earth all along because they're here to protect us from like they knew that this this uh, thing was c gonna come for Earth like they always knew that all along. Is that what Sir Edmund Burton's trying to say? Because I'm a little bit confused here. Because like are you are they is he trying to say that the Cybertronians always knew that at this time Cybertron or whatever this thing is called is going to make its way to Earth? If that's true. Then, um, what about the events of Dark of the Moon? That was, uh, that was, uh, caused by, by an event that Sentinel Prime and Megatron caused. So did they know about that too? So I'm wondering how they're going to explain that. Moving on. This is a scene I'm very, very, uh, excited to watch. This was the scene filmed at Blenheim Palace, which is the resting place of Sir Winston Churchill. And this is an awesome scene because you see this, this, this vehicle roll into this, this Nazi headquarters, this Nazi palace. And then it, it, the, the, uh, the trunk opens in the process of transformation. This, this allied soldier comes out of it and then it starts transforming. And then it starts blasting everything up. Like these more allied forces come on the left and the right. And then this in this situation, this I believe it's an Autobot. It must be an Autobot because they're fighting against the, the Nazi soldiers. 
Uh, this Autobot comes out, both guns blazing, it's complete chaos, and what an exciting scene. Now, I'm just thinking that this Autobot here is Bumblebee. Because Bumblebee appears based on those posters, those propaganda posters, that he appears that he has fought in the wars. And it's also just uh, suggested that Bumblebee has a bit of a past. And uh, like he's been around for a while, like especially during World War II times. But I'm looking at the transformation and I'm looking at the shape. And I'm also looking at the fact that that could be like a... I can't tell what kind of vehicle that really is. But I'm sure they had Volkswagens back then. But I just don't know if that's an actual Volkswagen. So uh, if they actually... If that was like a Volkswagen, like like a... Uh, like some kind of vehicle back then that could be like an homage to the Volkswagen bug or beetle that that uh he was in in uh in G1 so um that could be Bumblebee and Bumblebee fought the the Germans in the past and that's a pretty awesome concept now the 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 um the TV spot actually ends with this shot right here where you see a couple of these statues that's Optimus Prime as his knight armor version and to the right the head looks like Bumblebee and he's in deep thought like this head of this statue that's on the right. But on the left, there's also another statue of Optimus. Like it's just his, his head, but you only see the top of it. But it looks like it's the, the, the trilogy version of Optimus Prime and not the Armor Knight version because you can tell the head is a little bit less um, knight-like, if you will. So uh, Sir Edmund Burton definitely knows more than we think. He knows a lot. And he's part of this network of people who know about the Cybertronians, the NBEs, and the fact that they have existed forever. I'm just curious about the Witwickens, as well as if they're actually going to talk about the original seven. You know how, or the original eight or seven, I can't remember, but in um, in the Sector 7 scene with, um, uh, with uh, uh, what's uh, John Turturro's character, sorry, uh, Agent, um, Agent Simmons, he said something about the original 9 or 7 or 8. I can't remember. But I wonder if they're going to talk about that. Because that is something that they don't explain anything about. But you can make of it of what you will. Right? And you could. it's very ambiguous. ambiguous but like you could say anything about it. But I think it's a great opportunity for them to actually explain something now. Considering that Sir Edmund Burton knows a lot about their past. So there's a lot of loose ends that could be um, wrapped up. Or at least tied up together. Anyways, that's all I got to say in this episode. Uh, who do you think that is? Do you think that's actually Bumblebee fighting against the Nazis? Uh, I'd love to know your thoughts. Let me know in the comments section below. And uh, yeah, there you have it. Uh, th this is a really, really cool TV spot. I, I love that it, it provides more mystery and a little provides a little bit more insight. But in any case... Why don't you let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. As always, if you enjoyed this episode and you want to see more, hit the like button, subscribe to the YouTube channel, like me on Facebook, The Raging Nation. Also, follow me on Twitter, Raging Nation. My name is Alexi. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace. Dude there at the last minute, I think Michael Bay added that, added, wanted to add that in just for comics, comic relief. Um, and then we get our first introduction.